Recording Studios. Today I thought I'd share a couple of quick tips with you. Uh, two. One, how to cheaply and quickly expand your electronic drum kit. In my case, I'm using a Roland TD4. I um, only had so many ports and I wanted to add another instrument or two and I found a way to do that uh, pretty easily. So I thought I'd share that with you. And the second one is a uh, little tip as to how you can record those drums to a DAW such as Pro Tools uh, without ever having to get up from behind the drum kit and run back and forth between the kit and your control room, uh, which is uh, something I found to be a tremendous benefit. So with that in mind, here we go. <clears throat> okay guys, again what I've got is a standard Roland TD4. I uh, wanted to add a couple of another cymbal or two, maybe uh, uh, some other types of percussion. And again, I was simply out of port. So you might notice the Alesis uh, perk pad. Uh, which I've got mounted right to the rack of the TD4. And you might notice the uh, rolling keyboards in the background. Well, the Alesis is sending MIDI to the rolling keypads, or the keyboards. And the keyboards are receiving that MIDI and turning that into an audio signal. In this case, I've set up these four pads uh, as a couple of cymbals, a little splash and a crash, and some other percussion. Again, those sounds are coming from the Roland uh, through a MIDI cable that's going from the uh, perk pad to the Roland. So, uh, again, it's all Roland sounds, uh, so there's really a good mix between the actual set itself and the Elisa's perk pad. Works out pretty slick. You know, I guess I should say uh, it's a lot easier, there's a lot easier way of doing this than um, using MIDI uh, to an external keyboard or an external, or trigger an external keyboard. Um, obviously the uh, Roland Perk Pad itself outputs some pretty nice sounds and you could take audio right out of the Roland Perk Pad, um, send that into your recording path and record some, uh, record into separate channels. Uh, kind of neat thing about that as well, either way you go, whether you go direct audio from the perk pad or through an external uh, tone module, uh, it's, it's kind of nice that you have the ability of doing some post-mixing of that extra percussion tracks. Um, obviously one of the downsides of using electronic drums for any kind of recording is in post. Uh, if your snare is too hot, if your hi-hat's not hot enough or something like that, then uh, unfortunately, as you know, it's, it's, it's really, really tough to fix in a mix, and I sure don't recommend you do that. Uh, so part of the trick is to get it right the first time. Uh, one of the ways I've kind of learned to do that, and a, a big helper, is by making use of the record feature that's uh, available on most electronic drum modules. Uh, certainly is in the case of the Roland TD4. Uh, so I just hit record, the device goes into standby. As soon as I start playing, the device starts recording. Uh, just hit record again to stop. Now the beauty of this is uh, now it's recorded into the module, hasn't gone into Pro Tools, not even in my computer. Um, I, can, I can just hit play here and evaluate uh, what I've recorded. Um, <clears throat> but even more powerful than that, if I want to do some mixing, uh, since I've got it in this module, I can now go into the menu of the device, go down the mixer, uh, select that, select the pad that I want to change just by hitting that pad. Um, and then I can change that value. So in this case, I'm going to lower the snare uh, drastically just so you can hear the difference. Come out of menu and I'll hit play. And you can hear that the snare drum is much, much lower. Uh, so this is a real helpful tool in trying to get the percussion mixed right before you commit it to Pro Tools. Because again, once committed to Pro Tools, uh, real difficult to separate a mix between the hi-hat and the snare for uh, sake of conversation. Okay, we're going to spend just a quick minute on the uh, perk pad itself. Uh, I'm not going to go into how to generate different sounds as a standalone device. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, read the owner's manual. Very simplistic to do. Uh, but as, if you're sending a MIDI to an external sound module, such as my rolling keyboards, uh, you'll notice that uh, there's a selection, um, controller up and down, uh, and it shows what we're controlling here. Um, I've got MIDI selected, and then there's the value, which allows us to adjust that perimeter. Um, and then, of course, what pad we're adjusting. So in this case, pad 1 is highlighted, so we're adjusting pad 1. Uh, so if I change this value, 
that's changing the MIDI signal that's going out to the rolling keyboards. And uh, in turn, that's generating a different sound. Um, so as far as tone and volume uh, from that uh, third or fourth track, if you're going to use stereo from the perk pad, uh, remember you can kind of concern all that or address all that, I should say, in post. Um, you could add different effects. I, I always recommend recording dry, uh, especially something like drums. Um, and with e-drums, obviously not a whole lot of need for compression. Uh, but the beauty of recording dry is you can add whatever reverb, whatever kind of effects you want post. And if you don't like it, it's uh, so easy to change. And again, uh, talking about mixing volume and tones between the Elisis and the original Roland drums, Again, something I recommend not spending a whole lot of time on or consideration as far as front-end capture. Uh, something you can concern yourself with in back-end post. Alright guys, so now we're going to talk about the uh, second little tip. And I love this one. I think you will as well because it's free. We all like free tips that are uh, slick and work cool. Notice I've got the old trusty iPad out. And old indeed, this is an iPad 1. So if it works on this one, it should work on anything. Um, I've got an app called my Mac uh, it's an absolute free uh, just surf over to your your app store <clears throat> and what my Mac does is it emulates your desktop of your Macintosh so again this is assuming that you're using a Macintosh for your DAW software uh, but if you are you simply if your Mac is connected Wi-Fi to your home network and your iPad is connected hi-fi to your home network uh, then you run this app and voila there is your desktop of your Mac and of course it's not just for Pro Tools anything that you happen to be running on your Mac will show up on your iPad uh, and what I do is I just blow up transport control uh, because sitting behind the drum set that's all I really need and um, <clears throat> I could just stop and start record track as necessary So again, this has been Joe with Lakeside Artistic Recording Studios. I hope these tips help you out a bit. Feel free to contact us at www.lakeside-audio.com. Thanks for watching.